It's The Real News Network, and I'm Greg Wilpert in Baltimore. President Trump announced that he is nominating Stephen Moore as a new member for the Federal Reserve Board of Directors on Friday. Already, many mainstream economists have complained about the choice, saying that Moore is both unqualified and too much of a conservative ideologue. Trump probably chose Moore because both he and Moore believe that the Federal Reserve's interest rates should be lowered and not raised in order to prevent an economic slowdown. Here's what Moore had to say when his appointment was announced. I consider myself a growth hawk, so I think what I will really try to pursue and, and persuade the chairman of and work with the chairman to try to make sure that the America grows as fast as it can and that wages rise and that we have a, a you know a long period of prosperity through a sound monetary policy like Trump has done a, obviously a great job on on tax reduction and uh, you know deregulation and looks like we're going to get this trade deal done with China if we have a sound monetary policy with stable prices on top of that you know I really believe we could have 3 to 4% growth for another 5 or 6 years what they did in December with the rate increase was a it was a very substantial mistake. Stake, and the Fed has, thank God, you know, reversed that and, and changed directions with respect to the rate. Joining me now to discuss the Fed and Moore's nomination is Mark Weisbrot. Mark is co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research in Washington, D.C., and author of the book, Failed, What the Experts Got Wrong About the Global Economy. Thanks for joining us again, Mark. Greg, thanks for having me. So we've covered the Fed and its policies on the Real News Network a number of times, but it bears repeating. Why should people even care about what the Fed does, and what does it do anyway? Well, the Fed is extremely important. I think anybody who cares about income distribution, employment, the strength of social movements, including the labor movement, has to care about the Fed because it's the main determinant uh, of the unemployment rate, which affects all these uh, other things. And your racial justice, for example, the unemployment rate in the U.S. for uh, African Americans is usually about twice the rate uh, for white workers. So it's enormously, it's enormously important. And you can see how it works, for example, uh, since the Fed and uh, it became clear that the Fed wasn't going to raise interest rates this year. And the futures markets are saying probably all the way through uh, 2020 and maybe beyond. Uh, the mortgage rates have come down significantly. In fact, this week was the biggest drop in 10 years for average 30-year uh, uh, fixed-rate mortgages. So this affects the, the housing market, and that affects you know the overall economy. So this is what the Fed does, and, and I think it doesn't get anywhere near enough attention from people who, who are affected by it and, and who also who care about economic and social justice. Now, as I mentioned in the introduction, Moore's appointment has caused quite a stir. From your perspective, what's uh, this apparently controversial appointment all about? Well, Moore's appointment uh, does, you know, seem kind of inappropriate for the reasons that were mentioned in your introduction. He has these pretty far out ideas. And in fact, he even is quoted as saying, we should discuss whether the we even need a Fed at all. Um, He's said that interest rates should be linked to commodity prices, which are very volatile. It's kind of a, you know, not very good idea. Um, and I think the most important thing that's caused this controversy is that it's very, so obviously political. He's, so it's, it's kind of obvious that Trump has put him there against all kinds of advice, or is trying to put him there, I should say. He's not, uh, you know, confirmed yet, and he might not be. He, he's nominated him. Trump has nominated him because he's going to do what Trump wants. And so people are reacting against the politicization of the Fed. Now, how, how do you think uh, we should be thinking about this uh, and about uh, Trump and the Fed from your perspective? I mean, what's the problem with this debate and why is it so important? Well, this is kind of messy because on the one hand, yeah, you don't want the Fed to be an instrument of the president's electoral uh, strategy. On the other hand, a lot of people will react in a way, and you see this in the media and in, in among political leaders opposed to Trump, they'll say, they'll react in a way that sees the Fed or describes the Fed as this really neutral institution that is really just looking out for everyone and is, of course, supposed to be independent. Uh, and that, we should the the only problem 
that we're facing with the Fed is that Trump is trying to use it for his purposes. And that would be a bad uh, narrative because we have to just stand away from the electoral uh, politics of it for a minute. We have a real problem with the Fed. And so some of the things that even Trump, for his own reasons, is saying are, are, are true about it. For example, they have raised interest rates nine times since uh, 2015 without uh, justification, because inflation, which is supposed to be the threat they're fighting when they raise interest rates, they're not supposed to do it for any other real reason. When they raise interest rates, uh, they're, they're supposed to be doing this in response to inflation. And inflation has been below their own chosen target all of this time. And in fact, for the whole last decade. So that's bad. I mean, they have unnecessarily uh, slowed the economy. And Trump has criticized them. So we don't want to fall into this narrative of people who just believe in the Fed and think that everything they do is right. And this is most of the business press would not uh, think, would, would argue that the, the Trump shouldn't even uh, challenge them. And this is very important because the Fed has actually caused the uh, all the recessions in this country since uh, World War II, uh, except for the last two, which were caused, as you know, by the bursting of asset bubbles, the stock market and then the housing bubble. But, you know, that's still most the vast majority of recessions we've had. And if I had to guess, you know, what would bring on the next recession here, um, you know, the Fed is generally a, a prime candidate for that. Just one more question. Leaving aside now the effect that raising the rates would have, which would be, uh, which, as you said, could lead to another recession, who benefits, uh, let's say, from these last uh, rate increases? There were nine since 2015. I mean, is anybody benefiting for that? I mean, what's the rationale behind it, aside from this uh, apparently illusory fear of uh, inflation? Yes, well, some of it is ideological, but some of it is obviously reflects a conflict of interest. The financial sector, especially, wants very low inflation uh, because you know bondholders lose money when there's unanticipated inflation. You have the big, uh, you know, multinational corporations, and they care uh, about well, they care about the value of the dollar, which is also. They want the value of the dollar to be high, and the higher interest rates will make the will keep the dollar higher. So they care about it too. They want to be able to buy things cheaply overseas. But if you're an average person in this country uh, who is not rich and and powerful, you care much more about employment. And so the Fed has tended to not worry about employment as as much as it, it should. And there really is a conflict of interest around unemployment. I mean, the Fed is made up of people who sympathize much more with the with employers. And employers, they actually like a higher unemployment rate. It gives them more uh, workers to choose from, and it keeps helps keep wages down. And so they're looking at it much more from that point of view. And when the Fed raises interest rates, they are very deliberately slowing the economy and reducing employment. And you know, throwing people out of the work or preventing them from getting jobs, and this is not a side uh, collateral damage effect of what they're doing. It's actually the intention, with the idea that this will put downward pressure on wages and therefore lower interest rates. I think if the general public knew, and all economists know this, but if the general public knew that this was what the Fed was doing, there would be a lot more opposition to Fed's to the Fed's unnecessary interest rate hikes. Okay. Well, we're going to leave it there for now. I was speaking to Mark Weisbrot, co-director of the Center for Economic and Policy Research. Thanks again, Mark, for having joined us today. Thank you, Gregory. And thank you for joining the Real News Network.